lunchtime. Today's lunch is my favorite. I'm so hungry. I'm going to eat a lot today. Be careful not to overeat. It might upset your stomach. Upset my stomach? What's that? Looks like I need to take you on a journey through the world of digestion. Imagination magic, speed up time. Oops, got it wrong. Imagination magic, please pause time. Got it this time. Now we need to shrink our bodies down to a mini size. Oh my god! I can't believe I've become so tiny! Haha, <laughs> don't worry. We've just temporarily shrunk to the size of food so we can start the food journey. It feels a bit strange, but I'm excited. Let's go! Look, he's eating something! It's so fascinating to shrink. I feel like I'm the size of his food. Why isn't he moving? I've paused time! Stop dawdling and come with me! What are we doing inside his mouth? This is the first stop for food entering our bodies! Hi there, are you food? No, we're just here to experience the journey of food entering the body. Are you Mr. Tooth? Yes, after food enters the mouth, I'm responsible for chewing it. Chewing food allows it to enter the body. So teeth are really important, huh? Yes, teeth are the first team to handle food. So, remember to brush your teeth regularly, limit sugary foods, and take care of us. We'll remember that. Goodbye, Mr. Tooth. Nice meeting you. Oh my, have we been swallowed into the stomach? Not at all. We're just simulating the process of food entering the body. Thank goodness, I thought I was going to get eaten. Hi, are you Miss Stomach? Hi there, that's me. Do you need something from me? We're here to learn about the journey of food. We just met Mr. Tooth. Then we saw the food coming through the esophagus to reach you. Yes, I'm an essential part of the digestive process. I break down food with stomach acid, turning solid food into chyme. Then I transport the chyme into the small intestine through contractions. The stomach is amazing. I'll take good care of mine. Let me tell you, alcohol can harm me a lot. Kids shouldn't drink, and even grown-ups should avoid excessive drinking. A regular diet is also crucial. You should eat on time, avoid prolonged hunger, and refrain from suddenly overeating during a meal, as these things might make me unwell. Got it. Thank you, Miss Stomach. Nice meeting you. Are we at the next stop for food? Yep, we're about to meet the small intestine. Did you hear that sound earlier? I thought I heard some rumbling. Haha, <laughs> when the stomach pushes food into the intestines, it contracts. That's why you hear those rumbling sounds. Ah, uh, that explains it. I'm learning a lot on this journey. Look, that's the small intestine. Hey, are you talking about me? Hi there, small intestine. We're here to understand the journey of food inside the body. We just met Mr. Tooth and Miss Stomach. Well, hello, let me introduce myself. I'm the small intestine, mainly responsible for nutrient absorption. I have these tiny hair-like structures that absorb all the useful nutrients and then transport them into the bloodstream. Sounds complex, but cool. So the nutrients from what I eat get absorbed here. Does that mean the food's journey is almost over? Almost. Your final stop will be meeting the large intestine. Got it. Nice meeting you, small intestine. Goodbye. Look, that's the large intestine. Hi there, little ones. Where do you come from? We're here to see the journey of food. We've met Mr. Tooth, Miss Stomach, and the small intestine. Haha. <laughs> Sounds like an interesting journey. I guess I'm your final stop then. Does that mean the food's journey ends with you? Well, when they reach me, they're not exactly food anymore. It's more like the next stop is where you poop. Oh no, we don't want to see poop. Haha. <laughs> After the small intestine, most of the digested nutrients have been absorbed. What's left turns into stool here. I'll contract and move the stool towards the exit. That's when you'll feel like pooping. So the journey ends with poop. But why is food tasty and poop smelly? The stool sits here for hours, and the bacteria produce the smell. That's how poop gets smelly. That's really interesting. We won't disturb your work anymore. Nice meeting you, large intestine. Goodbye! Feeling so good after a full meal. My food's passed through my mouth and should be just reaching my stomach now. Miss Stomach must be on duty. Ha <laughs> ha! 
You're right! The food's already begun its journey! I think this trip takes many hours! Let's take a break while our bodies work hard to digest the food! Hi there! What's up? We're talking about Lugi's room. Lugi, what's wrong with your room? My mom asked me to tidy it up, but I don't know how. Haha, <laughs> it's not that hard! I can help! Gigi, do you want to help too? Of course! That would be great, let's go! Oh my! What happened to your room? Haha! <laughs> my room's a mess because I don't know how to organize things. I think we can figure out a way to tidy it up. Alright folks, the key to organizing things is to categorize and place them properly. We need to learn how to sort things out. Let's start with this shelf. We should split the items on the floor into three categories and place them on each level of the shelf. Hmm. How do we split so many things into three categories? Let me see. There are toys and books in these items. So, we can use one level for books and the other two for toys. That makes sense. Let me put all the books on the first level of the shelf. Next, let me categorize the toys and place them on the second and third levels. Yes, you're starting to categorize your toys. Look for similarities among them. Group the ones that share common traits. Let me think. Hmm. I think some toys are hard, like toy cars, trucks, cranes, and airplanes. They should be in the same category. And some toys are soft, like toy bears, dinosaurs, elephants, and ducks. They are in the same category, too. Excellent! You categorize them really well! Yeah, you're awesome! We can also classify them differently, like having a category for transportation toys, cars, trucks, cranes, and airplanes, and another for animal-themed toys, bears, dinosaurs, elephants, and ducks. That's logical! Gigi, you did great with your classification, too! Now let's put the toys back together based on their categories. now. Looks much neater. We still need to sort out these toys and put them into different boxes. Lugi, want to flex your sorting skills once more? Sure thing. Hmm. Let me see how to fit all these toys into three boxes by categorizing them. Here's my favorite soccer ball, my favorite Lego block for building, and oh, here's my puzzle. Got it. I can categorize these toys into Lego toys, ball games, and puzzles. Let me give it a shot. got the hang of organizing things. I bet your mom will be pleasantly surprised to see your tidy room. Thanks, Lily. Thanks, Gigi. It feels great to help others. I just saw Lugi has a lot of balls. I believe he must be a fan of ball sports. Actually, I've always wanted to try some ball games, but I'm not familiar with them. Then let me help you this time. Let's kick off the ball exploration journey. Do we have a new exploration journey? That's so exciting. Let's get started. Gigi, what kind of ball is this? Um, this is, I feel like I've seen this ball before. Hey, friends over there. Could you kick the soccer ball this way? Is this a soccer ball? Yes, this is a soccer ball. Soccer balls are round and usually made of black and white leather. In matches, we use our feet to pass and score goals. Soccer is a widely popular sport worldwide. In soccer games, players use their feet to kick the ball into the opponent's goal. Goalkeepers use their arms and legs to prevent goals. It's a team sport, and close teamwork is crucial to winning matches. Soccer seems fun. Here you go. Is this? It looks unique. Haha, <laughs> that's a football. It's more of an oval, kind of like an olive. F, you got it. Football is quite thrilling. The team's goal is to score by getting the ball into the opponent's goal. Players need to run fast and have passing and defensive skills. Sounds fun. 
but I need to get a bit stronger for this. Take your time. I'm going to run with the ball now. Let's see who can stop me. Do you know what this ball is? I think we've seen it before. This, is it a baseball? Correct. Baseball requires players to hit the ball with a bat and then quickly run to four bases. The batter needs to hit the ball within the field and then run to the four bases. The defense team prevents the batter from scoring. Baseball requires teamwork and skill. Baseball is cool. I really like it. If you're interested, we could go watch a baseball game together. Look at this ball. It's much bigger than a baseball. Yeah, that's a basketball. Basketball is a sport where players score by shooting the ball into a tall hoop. Players have to make shots into the hoop and also work with teammates, passing and defending. See? That's the hoop. The hoop is so high, I can't reach it at all. Basketball is great, but I need to grow a bit taller to be good at it. Haha, <laughs> you got the point! Basketball players are generally tall! Exploring these balls has been so much fun! Thanks, Lily! You're welcome. I'm glad I could help you get to know different types of balls. What type of ball do you find the most interesting? I think I'm most interested in baseball. Swinging the bat to hit the ball is cool. Or even wearing a glove to catch it seems exciting. But baseball has its own rules. So I need to understand them well. I love baseball too. I can teach you. Let's team up and play ball together sometime in the future. kids hope you guys like our channel learning is a fun journey here we can learn useful knowledge together in this episode we learned about the journey food takes inside our bodies do you remember the root yes from the mouth through the esophagus into the stomach then to the small intestine and finally the large intestine do you all remember what mr teeth and miss stomach told us about protecting our teeth and stomach if you don't rewind and check it out. Apart from the food's journey, we also learned how to categorize and organize items like Lugi did. Can you categorize and tidy up your room like Lugi? I believe you can do it! Practicing sorting items can make us even smarter! In this episode, we also got to know different types of balls. That's my favorite part. When you see different types of balls, they're not just various shapes and sizes of spheres. They represent a world of fun and dynamic sports. Soccer lets you score by kicking the ball into the opponent's goal, while baseball challenges you to swing the bat and sprint across four bases. Rugby demands quick running and strategic passing. And basketball, it's about shooting hoops into the high basket. Whatever sport interests you, each offers a chance to experience teamwork and individual skills. Explore these sports and you might discover where your passion lies. Join in and celebrate the joy of sports. Trying out different ball games can lead you to happiness, fun, and perhaps new friendships. Let's cheer for sports together and explore various ball games. Subscribe to our channel so you can find us more easily and never miss our updated videos. The story in the next episode is more interesting. See you next time. See you! But if I could choose, yes, if I could choose, I would run in some buttery mashed potatoes. Mashed, 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 mashed potatoes. I would run in some buttery mashed potatoes. Mashed, 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 mashed potatoes. I would run in some buttery mashed potatoes. I would sleep on a bed of frosted donuts. Do 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 nuts nuts nuts. I would sleep on a bed of frosted donuts. Do 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 nuts nuts nuts. I would sleep on a bed of frosted donuts, and I would swim in a bowl of chocolate ice cream. <laughs>